All right, y'all. So I just want to thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of The Rock Report. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe so that way you can stay updated on the latest content that we drop. Um, also, I just wanted to give y'all a quick heads up before y'all dive into this video. Um, just bear with me on the audio quality, even the video quality. I'm using the Skype platform and I didn't have the best connection this day. So it didn't start off looking so good, but bear with me. Y'all know what I'm about. Y'all know what kind of topics I dive into from just personal branding, topics of motivation, inspiration. Um, so stick around, bear with me, and I hope y'all get some value from it. Thank y'all. Hey, what's the deal, y'all? Back with another one. It's another episode of The Rock Report. Um, and this one, I got a special guest, my homeboy, Don Cisco. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, let you introduce yourself, um, you know, tell the people how we, uh, how, we, how we got here. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, my name is Don Cisco, of course, like Cordell said. Um, we met about a year and a half ago, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah bro, almost two, yeah. Yeah, almost two years, you know what I'm saying, man? You know, friends ever since. Uh, great minds think alike, you know what I'm saying? That's what they say. Um, Facts. Every time we talk, you know, we have great ideas, great conversations. You always learn from each other. So, Damn. you know, we always bounce ideas off each other. And uh, he actually, you know, helped me grow Apex, you know, so he gave me a lot of pointers to help me grow Apex. So that's how we really met, you know, just having good conversations over time. Yeah. This is going, that's how we got here. Respect, bro. And uh, yeah, you're right, bro. Like, great minds think alike. That was one of the things I noticed about you. The first day we met on that rooftop, bro, uh, you remember how just, just special mm -hmm. that day was? It was, it was, yeah. that was a good day. Like, um, it was an experience I had never had before, you know, having lunch and stuff catered to us. But mm -hmm. me and you had the chance to slide off and have our own one on one, and you left me with a nugget, bro, that I would, that I would never forget. Mm -hmm. You told me. You said if people don't hear you, what you're saying, then they're gonna see you. Definitely. And, and I'm damn near thinking about getting that tattoo, bro, because that's yeah. kind of been my approach literally. Um, since I've been able to like process that, I stopped. I decided I'm just done talking for real. Like I'm done like telling people what I'm about to do. We're gonna have conversations about what's already been done. You know, right. what I'm saying? I'm, I hate exactly. when people tell me what they're what they're about to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's been done? So you yeah. left me with that, bro. I appreciate it. Um, and I remember almost a couple years ago, like you said, when we met, you was telling me about this idea of Apex, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I just remember how innovative it was. I had never heard nothing about this. I know um, Apex is more of a, you know, fitness uh, type of industry. So I just wanted you to kind of expand on, you know, what it is and, uh, you know, how you came up with it and, and uh, you know, the direction you're trying to go. Yeah, definitely. So uh, Apex is uh, it's holistic fitness. Um, it's based in, um, you know, a lot of times we work out and we don't really, we focus on our the physical aspect of it, and not really the, you know, the mental aspect of it. So, and that's really a need, especially in, um, in our urban centers like Detroit, you know, um, Chicago, Philadelphia, uh, just across the country. So I'm just trying to really, I'm dig into these urban cores and like, instill a sense of mental health, you know, mental well-being, uh, back into, you know, these places. Um, so Apex, um, right now what it, what I'm doing is uh, I make workout plans. Um. Uh, they focus on mental fitness as well as physical fitness as well as um social env and environmental fitness because wow like i like i said it's, um, it's holistic so it's based off of everything is um as one and when everything is in order as one everything works together Big so facts. facts facts yeah so that's really i've seen a need you know that's really how i got started i've seen a need and um, like you said, what's been done. So I was like, I can't talk about it. I just got to execute. So everything has just been moving. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And you mentioned, um, you know, you mentioned something interesting that I heard. You said, um, you know, you also wanted to focus on just uh, mental fitness, um, right. social fitness. I don't think we, I don't think we talk about that enough. And I don't think, um, you know, a lot of fitness industries put emphasis on that because what's more important, having a six pack in your abs or having a six pack in the mind? Exactly. LeBron exactly. talked about it all the time, how important uh, mental uh, fitness is to his mm -hmm. overall success. Yes, you know exactly. What I'm thinking about it, especially as an athlete, think about you, think about developing that faculty of the will, you know what I'm saying, willpower. Um, as an athlete, having that discipline, it makes you an athlete like LeBron, you know what I'm saying? That's how you become an athlete like, you know, uh, Kevin Durant or, you know, so that's how you get those rings, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they asked him on TNT the other day, like, yo, what would you, what, what, should, what would be your advice to a young player coming up just trying to figure out the best way to be successful? And he was, he mentioned the mind. He like, yo, get the mind right. Get your mind right. 
Like, obviously, your body got to be taken care of. But he's like, yo, if you ignore up here, the whole thing is done. So, Thanks. yeah, that's dope that you want to, you know what I'm saying, put an emphasis on that. And then you mm-hmm. also mentioned uh, uh, social fitness. Can you kind of, like, yeah. expand on that a little bit? Oh, uh, yeah, so definitely. Um, so eventually, um, somewhere down the line, I want to have, like, an actual physical hub, you know, a center. You can actually meet up and stuff like that. I would, um, for example, I have a workout plan. It's, uh, it's like, based on group fitness. So you can actually mm-hmm. be in groups and, like, challenge each other to, like, to get better, you know what I'm saying? So it's actually... Like I said, this focus on um, urban cores, so it's bringing back a sense of trust, you know, a sense of like, you know, we hands together into, into these places that don't really have that anymore. Wow. Um, just through fitness, through mental fitness, and through physical fitness, through actually, you know, what I'm so you're getting better, not only mentally, not only physically, but socially as well. Incredible, because um, you know, when I go to the gym, I'm I'm a loner. I like to go by myself. I don't. I'm the type of guy I don't really need nobody else to motivate me. But if I have somebody to come with me, obviously, I'm gonna put in that mm-hmm. much more work. Definitely. But um yeah I'm I'm not sure if I've ever heard of like any type of social club you know maybe like those like yoga classes that the women be doing keeps them social and stuff like that but mm-hmm. for the most part you know we come in there and we do our thing on our own it's no real sense of community about it you know exactly right that's, that's and, dope bro yeah and it's not really losing that you know so you can keep that you want to be you know what I'm saying like because it's therapy to some people you know sometimes you want to be alone to work out and that's okay but sometimes you know it's a club, it's still okay to be with a group. You know, sometimes you need that, you know, outside exposure just to, you know, get a, another perspective on things. So um, that's fact. important as well. Big facts. It's just when I be thinking I know it all, like I got my ass whooped at the gym the other day by this old 50 year old lady. <laughs> she seen me. She seen me doing lunges mm-hmm. and she was like, uh, uh-uh, no, no, you're going to have to put your hips into it. And I'm like, Excuse me. Yeah. And, bro, she just got to breaking down the physiology of the whole body and shit. And I'm like, I, I ain't got time for this. Bro, I almost threw up trying to, like, <laughs> do what she told me yeah, to do. Yeah. Like, you put legs straight up, straight up. And I'm like, oh, She's been around. Yeah. And I got my ass put by that old lady, man. So, like, when I see her at the gym, I be dodging her and shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, um, she's but yeah, like, you get better. You know? <laughs> <laughs> for real. But, you know, so, yeah, like, you know, uh, like I said, I like to do my own solo little thing. But I appreciate her trying to help out. Um, so like, you know, I, I, obviously we talked about, you know, getting you a website built up and uh, mm-hmm. you know, putting out content on the internet, bro. I remember when it was just a conversation and yeah. now it's reality. Like, I remember that. Yeah. This is what, this is exactly what you're doing. You literally have a website mm-hmm. and you literally have content out. <laughs> no, I, remember, I remember I was telling you about it. I remember I was just talking to you about it. It was a convert fucking station, bro. And, was... and the reason why I'm so proud of you, bro. Like, man, <coughs> the reason why I believe in you so much, you know, because you, you don't just talk about it. You mm-hmm. do the shit. You know, right. um, when I seen you the other day, I seen all those books, like, you know what I'm saying, on mm-hmm. your desk and shit. And I'm like, I understand this this man is searching for wisdom. He's searching for knowledge. Yeah. Which all is going to make you a more valuable individual in the long run. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's going to give you the right to speak, the right to stand on stage and, and speak mm-hmm. your truth to people. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Just ultimately impact more people. So I just kind of want to ask you, what was that thing that helped you make the jump, bro? Like, when did you decide, you know what, fuck it. I'm about to start putting out the content, bro, because that's a hard step for people to take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have to, like, step outside of, like, because I am not going to, I'm not going to lie to you at all. At first, it took me a while to, like, actually develop the confidence to just put content out there because I'm like, it got to be perfect. You know what I'm saying? I can't just drop stuff. You know what I'm saying? I got to make sure it's exactly how I want it to be. But then... I'm like, I'm missing out on, like, it's mean, like, I'm missing on people I can actually reach, you know what I'm saying? And I felt like it was more organic if I just started putting out content now and then letting it grow as people, and then letting people, you know, see the growth in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, it's a need right now, you know what I'm saying? So there's no need to wait for one. And two, like, people can help me grow, you know what I'm saying? Like, me putting the content out now, you know, they help me craft it to something better. Wow, bro, <laughs> man, that was that was powerful, my baby. Um, because that's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. A lot of us think that um, you know, we should go ahead and just wait it out, or there's a perfect time when they'll start putting out content. There is no such thing as the perfect time, bro. This is never, no such it's never the right time. And, and I learned that the hell learned from Gary. And I think it's fucking sad that I mentioned his name in there every piece of content I put out, bro. But that's the level of impact he's been able to have with mm-hmm. content. But um. Yeah, he mentioned the fact that, uh, like, it gives you more credibility 
when you start out with shit quality. When your shit mm -hmm. ain't the best. Right. Because when your shit is popping, people aren't going to be able to put that overnight success shit on you, bro. Mm -hmm. You have literal credibility. You right. can go back and pull up them old clips like, look yeah. where I started, bro. I was in the fucking bedroom. Yeah. Or like, yeah, I'm in the fucking basement right now. Yeah, I like got you said. The dirt, the shit, the, the grind, man. This is the yeah. process. Like and you I said, <laughs> it was a conversation. It started off as a conversation, you know what I'm saying? And no one people to see every part of it, you know what I'm saying? Every part of the growth of Apex, you know what I'm saying? Because... It's really for everybody, you know what I'm saying? It's really, we're growing together, so it's the most growing way, organic man, way to grow about it. That is, man, that is just so authentic, bro. You're going to win, man, because you got a, you got a very authentic approach and a very mm. just kind of like genuine way of thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? You're like, look, I can be reaching people right now. Exactly. So I know you just now starting. Um, I wanted to ask, have you uh, had the chance to like take advantage of Instagram or, or Facebook ads at all? Um, <clears throat> of course. Uh, yes. Uh, so, um, I actually started using uh, the ads as soon as I started promoting. So as soon as I got my face, so I just testing it out, just testing the waters, you know, and it got a pretty good response. So okay. after that, I took a minute to develop some more content, just just for the Facebook and just for um, Instagram. And I'll be putting it out and actually, you know, sponsoring and stuff. But it's been going pretty good. That's dope, man. I've been, uh, you know, trying to just encourage a lot more people to uh, kind of explore with that world because um, when I first started putting content on Instagram, I didn't really know too much about the promo feature. Mm -hmm. um, I was used to it from Facebook, but not Instagram. So um, my content, it really it really just wasn't reaching people, bro. Um, right. But the second I started just, you know, just just at least trying and optimizing ads and optimizing posts to find certain people, that's when I start to see like shit just getting jump started. And so... Mm -hmm. It's funny that I'll put out ads on Instagram, but it's bringing traffic to all of my social sites. Mm -hmm. It's bringing them right. back to my podcast. It's bringing them back to my YouTube. It's taking them over to my Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn. But you got to mm -hmm. be relevant on those platforms so that they, they can find you everywhere else. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So you got to, and that's where the content come back in. You know, you got to, you got to constantly, you have a responsibility kind of to kind of post content just to stay relevant and just to, you know what I'm saying, keep your brand going on social media i think that's interesting bro that you just uh literally called it a responsibility mm -hmm. that's what it becomes man you Definitely. know what i'm trying to do the, the the people that i'm trying to impact them and the way that i'm trying to impact them um it's gonna take me a lot longer to do that but i know i have to be patient with my approach you know because it's like you know when you waking up at six o'clock in the morning and you got 13 year olds in your inbox telling you that you're changing their lives Right. It's, it's going to be, begin to feel like it is exactly. an to get this fucking content out. Somebody need this shit right now. Right. And the responses, man, like I actually do get inboxes like, like, thanks. I really needed that. Or people coming up to me like, you know, they really, you know, they really helped me. So that like, like, like I said, it's responsibility. Like you got to keep going. You can't just stop there. You know what I'm saying? You got to push the gas. And let me tell you another secret, bro. This is some sauce right here. Um, Last piece of content I posted on my Instagram, I think the title of the video was um, uh, Invest in Your Employer. Mm. And in um, employer. I, when I put it out, to, to me, thinking to myself, and I, I've, I've said this before, I fucking hated it. It was trash. I'm like, I don't like how fuzzy it is. Mm -hmm. My man's head got the light beam, and I don't want that. I don't like mm -hmm. this. I don't like this. I cannot do this. I am not about to post this. Post it. Just like that, bro. And it ended up getting more fucking like Man, than yeah. all of my other shit that I really was looking forward to posting. Mm -hmm. like, How the fuck is that working? But the see, the thing is, it's not for us to determine whether or not we like our own shit. Right. We know what we're trying to communicate. We know what we're trying to say. Put that shit out and let somebody else determine if it's helpful or not, or if it's exactly. Or not. And they gonna tell you what you what you, you know saying what you messed up on. That's, you know what I'm saying. Like I told you, was helping you perfect your craft. It's that's all it's doing, bro. And what we're doing right now, what you're creating, what we're doing, this is a content product. Your content becomes that product. It's a free product. Subscribe yeah. to this right here. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna right. keep you, I'm gonna keep you fed. And that's exactly. how they go, bro. So exactly. Um, <laughs> um, you know, this this uh these past couple of weeks been interesting, man. I mean, um, you know, this you being in the fitness world, yeah. Uh, that it's a certain mindset, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to kind of be hungry, you know, to get your body. <clears throat> and 
I was able to dive into that world for a long time. And I just know just the just the level of willpower that I had to dig deep into. Deep. But, you know, we share the world. With, we share this world with people who work extremely hard at what they do. And that brings me to the topic of Kobe. Mm -hmm. You know, this man was an extreme fucking like inspiration to an entire generation. It, because entire of the phrase, the Mamba mentality. Mamba mentality. It, it was a mindset of of work ethic that mm -hmm. was, you know what I'm saying, that has to be put in no matter what your craft is. Kobe talked about the fact that everybody has that box. His box was basketball. Mm -hmm. He said, your job is to make your box as beautiful of a canvas as you possibly can. And if you do, if you do that, whether you succeed or not, you've lived a successful life. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So what was what was your reaction, bro, when you heard the news that you know Kobe Kobe had passed? Um, I mean, I gotta tell everybody, uh, Kobe was my spirit animal. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, it's kind of weird. Like he was born, I think. Uh, he, no, I'm sorry, I was born in '96. That's when he got drafted. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, and so, like, yeah, you know, I'm turning 24. You know, in a few weeks. You know what I'm saying? He he just passed, you know what I'm saying? He was 24. Wow. Wow. You know, it's kind of crazy. So I really, he was really like, like, he was my spirit enemy for like everything. Like, he was always there, you know? Ever since, I think, he first became like, you know what I'm saying? Of course, when he, the Pistons, you know what I'm saying? We, Pistons, you know, so we beat them, but. Yeah, I remember back that. Back in the day, yeah, you remember that, but. Mm -hmm. Just that mentality, he just never quit. Dropping 81 in the game, you know what I'm saying? Dropping, drop, just. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's yeah. hard. It's hard to explain just yeah. that mentality. So, I I literally would spend like hours locked in the room. You know what I'm saying? Just working on my craft. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would play like you know what I'm saying? Like, I would go on YouTube and play like <laughs> Kobe clips. You know what I'm saying? Kobe motivational clips. You know what I'm saying? Or like just watch go over his plays and stuff. Like, just how clutch he was. You know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta add it. You know what I'm saying? I gotta. So he was. That's how much of an impact he had on me. And when he passed. It's like somebody got it. Like I feel like everybody felt the same way, but somebody got to keep that going. You know what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. I feel like it lit that an extra spark in everybody. So that my mentality is more than like, more alive than ever now, especially in me. You know what I'm saying? So big facts, bro. It's it gave me crazy. a lot of motivation. It's crazy when you think about the fact that his death made the world a better place. As tragic as it was, right. he lifted so many spirits to be exactly. better. To mm -hmm. execute more, to go after it, to stay hungry. Like he made, he literally made the world a better place. And so you can ask anybody that knows me, bro. I was devastated when it happened. Like fucking yeah. tears, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I couldn't sleep, you know what I'm saying? I it was, man, it was like, what? I couldn't eat. That was our, that was our childhood growing up. And so childhood. You know, I, I have reflected on it the other day as I'm coming home, just driving in my car. And um, as I'm meditating on it, I just started thinking like, damn. Why am I upset that Kobe gone? I should actually be grateful. I should be grateful mm -hmm. that the universe gave this man 41 years of a chance to come here, do what he was supposed to do, impact, and get the fuck up out of here. Mm -hmm. I should be grateful that he had the chance to do that and return to the ether. You know what I'm saying? Because my day right. is coming. And I wanna, I'm want to. i ho hoping that I get the chance to make my impact before it's time right. to it, you know, make my departure. And mm -hmm. he did it. His job was done. Uh, um, I feel like you know what I'm saying? He's timeless. He's archetypal. You know what I'm He's going to be there forever. His name is always going to be there. So it's like, you know, whether he's here physically or not, you know. He don't even have, he don't even fucking right. have to be here. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's Kobe. You don't got to say his last name. Kobe. Know? One name, four letters. <laughs> four letters. Created history. You know. Created if, a legacy. <laughs> and so, <laughs> that's why I do what I do, bro. That's why, <laughs> that's why we were recording this podcast right now. You know, we're trying to create legacies out here, bro. Exactly. When, when this, when we're, when we're gone, bro, a hundred years from now, mm -hmm. through, this, through this piece of content, we're able to penetrate and we're able to go further and be alive longer. So Kobe will always live digitally. He'll always, always. be there. Like you always. say, you go to your room and you watch some motivational videos. The next yeah. time you watch a Kobe video, I want you to type in Kobe, remember the name. Kobe, remember the name. Right, because that you remember real. that one song off Live 06? This is 10% luck, 20% skill, 15%. Yeah. That was an old little live song. And so, like, watching Kobe highlights while that song playing is just kind of like a spiritual experience. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> just oh, type that in, man. Go, go get Kobe some real motivation, bro. Name.
Definitely. I'm going to take that out for real. For sure, man. <laughs> so, but, you know, obviously, like, you know, like I said, what we're trying to do is build legacies. Um, you know, and you're starting to put out your content now. Um, I just want to ask you, like, where do you, where do you, like, like, where's your head at as far as, like, if, 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 if shit was to pop for you in a year or if it took five years or if it took 10 years, like, where's your head at, head at when it comes to, like, just the timeline and shit? Mm-hmm. Um, so, apparently, you know, like I said, I'm trying to push the gas. Like, I'm trying to move as fast as possible, but at the same time, I'm pacing myself. I don't want to move too fast. Um, but there's no reason for me to slow down right now. I haven't got any, you know, the universe haven't told me to slow down yet, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. Um, right now, um, I'm looking at being a actually, like I said, a physical, physical center as soon as I can. I'm raising, you know what I'm saying, I'm trying to raise the funds for that. You know, I'm working for that right now. That's what the mission is, um, because what that would do is, uh, like just unite, you know, what I'm saying, these these centers, like I said, these urban centers, um, in a way that has never been done that people haven't even, you know, what I'm thought of. Like I said, focus on mental health, you know what I'm saying, physical health, social health, and environmental health. Um, so not only um, am I focused on, like, developing people, I'm focused on, like, cleaning up the environment, you know what I'm saying, giving back energy, giving back to the community and stuff. So I say within the next few years, um, you should definitely see more events like that, more uh, community service events, more networking events, um, more physical locations, you know what I'm saying? Definitely, I say within the next five, that's the goal, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm working on. Okay, and I like what you said. You like you mentioned that, you know, you're trying to move as fast as you can, but at the same time, pace yourself. And it's like, mm-hmm. um, you know, for me, uh, you know, I used to live off other people's timelines. You know, I wanted it to happen because mm-hmm. I seen that they, it was happening for them. And it's like, dang, why he killing it? I'm not crushing it. But I realized that other people's timeline ain't my timeline. And what I have to learn how to do is enjoy my process. Exactly. Even, even Kobe mentioned that. He mentioned loving your process. So he like mm-hmm. the days where you don't feel like getting up early or working out longer, like that's your that's the process. That's, that's the part that you have to figure out how to enjoy and get the exactly. Of. So like mm-hmm. but me personally, bro, um, and I hope you can feel me when I say this, I don't care if I actually if I'm actually successful or not. Like mm. I, I don't give a fuck. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's I care deep. more about being happy during the process and the journey. That's, that's what it's about. You know that's what, what it's about. And I know human beings, we appreciate progress more than anything. So right. along the journey, I've seen progress and I've seen myself moving yeah. forward. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay yeah. with the pace that is happening at. I'm going to stay patient and, and you know, just let opportunities find me where they may, you know, because yeah. you, um, you mentioned that one day you want to have you want to have a couple centers, right? And you know, mm-hmm. obviously, us every every entrepreneur they want their own head headquarters or, or or storefront and things like that. And I'm mm-hmm. like, fuck, man, we live in a world where you know you gotta figure out how to come up with the capital and shit, and then invest the money, and hopefully you did your projections right and you ain't short or work exactly five percent too high. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how the fuck do you supposed to come up with all this money? And then it's, it just always come back full circle the same exact conversation which is why me and you are here, are here today it all comes back to personal branding yes you personally exactly. branding yourself being the man in front of the camera giving the information in front of the viewer that's the, that part of the process as small as that is is going to lead to you being able to afford getting that getting that center or sure. just getting shit in motion period as yes. your brand as your personal brand creates more awareness and attention more opportunities mm-hmm. naturally is just gonna find its way to you. Other brands are gonna want to pay you just for exposure. You know what I'm saying? Hey, can we um, you know, can we maybe uh provide these or provide you with a uh, with a center maybe? You know, you just you know shout us out a little bit. We see you got a uh, hundred thousand fucking subscribers. So mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like they they need your attention because they didn't take the personal brand route. You know what I'm saying? They did the traditional right. company route and shit. Now they need some help. So. Yeah. You know, you you almost become a mini influencer in within your industry. Mm-hmm, definitely. That's where all the power is, bro. Brands need influencers. Definitely. They were they, bro. They I just seen like the commercial about um, you know, for a great low rate, you can get online, go to the general and say, <laughs> and say something. <laughs> they got my boy Snoop in there now. You know what I'm saying? At first Good. it was Shaquille O'Neal, but you got to work. You know what I'm saying? That's how it goes now. And that's how you bring your brand attention. So keep mm-hmm. doing what you do, bro. Um, keep 
like I said, you've been reading a lot of books. You've been making yourself Always. more valuable. Keep sharing that information with people. Definitely. And um, you're going to find yourself with an audience of people who, who need that shit, bro. Mm-hmm. But That's the goal. Man, I just, bro, I definitely want to thank you, man, for, you know what I'm saying, taking the time out, sitting down with me. I'm so glad we finally got the, you know, yeah, finally. this one done. Yeah, um, as much like needed. I said, this, this going to be here for the rest of existence until, mm-hmm. like, digital devices and the internet is no more. <laughs> Long after we gone, so I appreciate you. I'm glad me and you had the chance to do this. If anything ever happened to either one of us, we always got this. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. This is always here type shit. That's what I appreciate the most about this shit, dog. Definitely. So I make sure Definitely. I shout your handle out. Make sure I shout the business out. Make sure y'all follow Apex Detroit. Um, I'm going to the handle up, too, on the screen. There y'all go right there. Um, man, get that man to subscribe and go ahead and you know, get some of that valuable information that he's giving out for free. Please, free knowledge. Free knowledge. Um, man, thank you again, my brother. And I'm uh, we're gonna do this again next time. Oh, yeah, many more. Appreciate you for sure.